Um, if we could have just a roll call, starting with Dr. Chapmas. I'm Jay Chapmas. Good evening. Peter Black. Tom Kenley. Peter Howe. Glenn Galino, Chair for the Day. John Thibodeau. I'm Secretary. Bruce Smith, Code Enforcement Officer. Good evening. Um, the first order of business tonight is to approve the minutes of June 22, 2010, which was our last meeting. Um, recording Secretary Carmen Weatherby has presented those to us. Uh, does anyone have any comments, changes to those minutes? Move they be approved. Second. All in favor? Minutes of June 22, 2010 are approved. Next order of business is, I don't believe there is any old business to address other than the minutes. New business is to hear the request of Jeff and Tara Bucci, is it? Bucci. For Kettle Cove Road, tax map U16, lot 7A, for a left side property line variance of 8 feet from the required 25 feet, a right side property line variance of 17 feet from the required 25 feet, and a flood property line variance of five feet from the required 25 to construct a second and third floor addition. Um, uh, Ms. Bucci, would you mind taking the podium and presenting your application? Could I just have one point of clarification? Sure. Um, the applicant thought that there was a 10 foot uh, distance between the property line and that right hand corner, and it didn't figure out on the on this, this schematic that she presented. So I asked to bring a full soap survey in, and I scaled out eight feet. So I advertised it. Um, as eight feet. Being as close as eight feet. Right. And I noticed that in your application, you thought it was 10 feet originally. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Correct. Um, when we had talked to the surveyor, he said based on the width of the ink on the paper and the measuring tool, looking at the two, that he believed it was 10, and then went back to the computer because he was out of town at the moment. but. Originally, the one that the previous owners had was 12, and so when we went with it, we went with the 10, which we believed it was. So that's why there was a difference. Do you want to amend your application to request the change to the 8 feet? That would be correct, because that's what we need to do. Okay, great. Thanks. We'll consider your application so amended. Super. My name is Tara Bucci. I'm a fourth grade teacher at Pond Cove Elementary School. I live and work here in the community. And as you've seen by my application, I'm looking to expand my home by going upward on the original footprint. Um, I've done a lot of research. I've learned a lot being at Town Hall here upstairs, a lot more than I ever thought I would about zoning and ordinances and things of that nature. So I think I have a pretty thorough packet that you've looked through here. Um, one of the things I'd like you to know is I'd like you to look closely at some of the, um, first at the lot of the, where we are, the U16 plot lot, and look at the different comparison houses in the neighborhood. Um, I went through and did some research about the houses that have been, um, additions have been made, and I included the photographs of those and showing the square footage of those houses. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar, I'm hoping you're familiar with the location of our house. We've done a lot of work inside and in the neighborhood, uh, in the surrounding yard of our neighbor, of our, of our home, I'm sorry. So we've done a lot of work. Our house is the smallest house in the Kettle Cove neighborhood in Crescent View area. It's 672 square feet, and that's including the little um, walk-in alcove on the right-hand side of the house. So it would be 660 square feet without that. I have some letters that I've asked um, neighbors to be here, and I appreciate neighbors coming in. But I also have some letters from um, some neighbors, and I believe you've received some emails. Is that correct? Two. Two? Uh, one from Janice Real. Reality Hatem. And uh, one from Sarah Whitney. Wonderful. Um, I also have some other letters that I'd like to read from neighbors, if that's okay with you. Okay. I have, you would need a copy. Sure, I can give you. I didn't photocopy them, they're, um, but I will hand them over to you. Um, one is from Kathy and Fred Berenger to the members of the Cape Elizabeth Zoning Board. Kathy and I are neighbors of Tara and Jeff Bucci, and we would like to state our support for their plans in question on the house. State it today. Then I have Chad and Jackie Muse, who you might be familiar with. They live at 25 Crescent View Avenue, and they have done an addition on their house, similar to what we were interested in doing with increasing square footage. We are happy to endorse the Bucci's in their effort to enlarge their home on the existing footprints of their home on 4 Kettle Cove Road. Since they purchased their home, they have improved it a great deal and enhanced the value of the area. We hope you will approve the request. And that's from Chad and Jackie. 
and then Carla Appleton to the Town of Cape Elizabeth Zoning Board. I have no objection to putting an addition on the home of Jeff and Terabucci at 4 Kettle Cove Road. And then Olivia Reali Hatem, who's a fifth grader at the middle school row. Dear Planning Board, my neighborhood is great, but my friend Mrs. Bucci needs to redo our house because she's having a baby boy, and her dogs, Jack and Maggie, need more space in the house, and Mr. and Mrs. Bucci need room for their baby boy. Sorry, I'm just emotional, don't mind. Please consider um, why I'm writing and know what I think about that. Again, thank you, Eliz uh, Olivia Reali Hatem, Peter Hatem's daughter. <laughs> So, these are some letters from some neighbors. I also have some neighbors here in support. Um, Does that fall in the moral persuasion category? No, it really wasn't. <laughs> I had a letter that I put in mailboxes. I didn't even go door to door, but I, it's sort of touching. Olivia's a pretty co cool little kid. That's but, a wrong board, though. I know. <laughs> I wasn't her teacher, so that's okay for the spelling there. She's a great kid. Anybody like to see this? Those well, letters. That's the room. Um, as you'll notice, um, one of the things I want to mention is we... we um, have a sketch. We really wanted to look at what the zoning board would allow us to do with our property. I know that the ordinance is what um, you have to follow through and abide by, so we wanted to look at what's available for us. We are willing to look at altering um, the facade or the inside of the house structurally to accommodate a two-foot need in that corner to make it ten feet away from the, the side property of the neighbor's lot. As you know, this house was built when all the rest of the properties were built in uh, Crescent View neighborhood, and they were placed on the lot where it would be best suited for the house. This house was placed up close to the road because behind it was the septic system. Behind that was a wetland area um, further back. If it was placed in the middle of the lot, we would have no problem, and um, there wouldn't be any question about this, but the placement of the house on the lot. Question for you. As far as the support that you've garnered from your neighborhoods is... Um, Included in that, the neighbor that lives on the side where you're looking to go to 10 yes. feet or 8 feet. Right in the um, statement of approvals, Pauline Zaleska is there, as well as other neighbors who are not, um, I do not have letters from. Um, the one neighbor next to me who just purchased the property that's, well, it's, they own it, but it's vacant as of right now, was in support asking actually what we would like to do with our house because they are going to be building one day on that lot. Um, I don't have any written consent from them because they don't live there. They're in Sacro. However, I believe something must have probably been mailed to them if they're the property owners um, based on So you don't have written consent from that side? The vacant the, lot? The lot? The lot on the side with the eight-foot setback. No, they don't live locally. I have verbal consent if that accounts for anything, but not written consent. Go ahead. Um, um, this is sort of new to me. Is there any way where I should go through? Do I go through the packet with you? Is that what you're asking? Or yeah, why don't we just walk through the packet? And, that would be great. And, uh, you can probably jump over the uh, scope of work. And okay. That part, and when you get over, I guess we have the statement of approval from your neighbors. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, the location of the property. If you open up and you look at the survey, you can see where the house is located and where it says 10 feet, you would need to alter that to be 8. Like I said originally on the um, previous owner's survey, it was 12. On our survey, we believed it to be 10, and it was in fact 8 based on that. So you can see the location of the house in the large property lot. Um, we are on the corner there. The house would remain in the original footprint. We are in, we'd like to go up two levels. The second level would be two-bedroom um, in a bathroom, and the third level would be possibly one bedroom later in life. Right now, it's just we're just looking at space. If we're going to take the time to do the addition and put on, we'd like to put some space where we could possibly develop later. How many acres do you have there? I think it's three quarters of an acre. Yeah, actually, 2,300 square feet, I see it. Go ahead. Okay. Um, the next includes just our tack town, town records of the house, and you can see the square footprint. Right now we currently have 672 square feet. It's a two-bedroom, one-bath ranch with a um, kitchen, which we've remodeled and been living in. If you look at the comparison of neighborhood properties, this is what I was told that we need to present. We need to present 50% or more, and we have 50% of the properties in the neighborhood area have been greater than 1744 square feet. Um, you can look at the information there. 
And it, when you say that, my understanding is you've marked off here on these charts? Correct. These are the maps that coordinate with that. So if you look at what's highlighted in blue, all these houses are equal to or greater than what we're proposing for the square footage. Then the next information on property talks about setbacks for front and side. 59% or more of the neighborhood properties have uh, less than or equal to 25 feet, and 52% have less than or equal to 10 feet side, back, side setbacks. Yeah, I guess on that one, I had a question for you. You, you say 52, uh, 15 and 29 properties have side setbacks less than or equal to 10 feet. Mm -hmm. There's 29 properties here, and maybe you could walk us through. Maybe I just counted wrong. Sure, 15 of them. 5 Crescent View, 12 Crescent View, 13 Crescent View is the, the side setback. 14 Crescent View, 15 Crescent View, 16 Crescent View, 19 Crescent View, 21 Crescent View, 29 Crescent View, 31, 23, 15, 14, and 4 Kettle Cove Road, the ones in bold. I see it. I was trying to fit them all on one page rather than having multiple pages, so I apologize for the font. It looks like you have five or possibly six properties that are eight feet. Correct. Of the 29. It was the best of my intentions. We had believed it was 10 feet until um, the day before Bruce and I met on Monday. I came back with the highlighted maps of that. So it was that was our thing. And like I said, with the original data from the last um, appeal to the zoning board, it was a 12-foot setback. And so with our survey from Dale Brewer, we believed it was 10 feet. Um, you, you lost me on this last. Oh, prior to us purchasing the house years ago, um, the original owners were interested in doing an addition. They lived out of town, and their setback on their survey was 12 feet. We had a more recent survey done, which was 10 feet, so we believe that was correct. Okay. It wasn't. It wasn't a regular survey done, though. Was it, that was a mortgage inspection plan. Correct. So I'm sorry. I'm calling it this a survey, is the only but it's survey. Okay. this boundary. Would you like to see this? We actually have a round of that, I believe. What's the height of, of the proposed addition? It would be three stories. You know, roughly how high? Hmm. I'm sorry I'm not good on the height of what three stories would be, but I believe if we look at... 10 foot a story, 33 feet. I'm not for sure it's on actually that. Actually, two, two stories and then a third story within a roof, right? Right. So you're probably talking 20 to the midpoint, which is where you measure the 35 feet. You're probably talking uh, max 27 feet, max. Probably a little less than that. That's Sorry, right. this is my husband, Jeffrey Bucci, who's here. I shouldn't apologize for him. <laughs> He was assuring the safety of our home with the rain coming through here. Do you know what the rain would be against? Mm. Well, we don't have a definitive plan at this point for the height, but I think we would stay within, you know, whatever the, the code yeah, expectation is. Well, that, uh, is that 35? not going to be an issue. Mm. Yeah, I just had a little question about um, this is your schematic? Yes. The reason why we have that is we're really concerned about going through and purchasing and buying plans if we didn't have the opportunity sure. of building something. Sure. Um, just while we're on that point, the, the, the question I would have, and not that it may not even be a zoning issue, but does the proportions, it's, it's a very tiny house, mm -hmm. do the proportions work once you kick it up to two and a half stories or two stories plus a roof? You know, because you have a very, it's almost, you might have a house that's higher than it is wide, which might look a little unusual, but something to consider. You mean from like any engineering perspective to be able to? Yeah, we're not, I, I don't think we require that for our okay. approval, but something to consider is you're yep. making the decision whether to go up. Sure. You don't want to create something that is not going to look right if right. your right. portions are off that way. What do we have a problem now? <coughs> 
one of your members. He was looking for support. Sorry, no, one of your members not present. You probably ought to take a couple minutes to find out what's going on. Just take a. Uh, why don't we take a five-minute recess just to find out what's going, what's uh, happening? He's okay. Oh, maybe he's back. We all set? I was asking, pardon me for interrupting the proceedings. The, the speaker system seems very echoey to me tonight. Oh, okay. uh, and it may be where I'm sitting, and I'm having trouble understanding where I'm sitting, and I asked the audiovisual tech to turn down the speakers or to adjust it somehow. Okay, great. I apologize for the interruption. Why don't you just say something into the mic and see if Dr. Chapman can you hear me can hear now? Is there a lot of echo when I'm talking? Yes. Is that and, and it could be where I'm sitting, but the spe inside speakers seem louder this evening. Uh, uh, again, I apologize for interrupting. I project my voice, too, so... Yep. All right, well, um, let's continue on with going through the application. Okay, so um, after we go through the side setback and front setback, you'll notice that the front setbacks are in bold and the side setbacks are in bold. Now, obviously, not all properties have both side and front like we are, so that's why there's a difference in the material. The next part of the application looks at our setback of our property and where our house is in location to Kettle Cove Road, as you can see there. The next is um, a Bucci original schematic of the uh, possible addition to our home. Yeah, could you just walk us through this? I'm sure. a little confused about what you mean here by... Yes, this was um, when I... Five foot on the right side. Right. Bruce was talking about how there might be a concern about these setbacks and how there could be a possibility where we might be able to do it in addition. However, we wouldn't be able to have livable space. So if there was the possibility of having an addition without livable space, this would be looking from a bird's eye view of how my house would be cut across and that would be unlivable space. So, so this is looking down from the sky or looking at it from the side? Looking down from the sky. Um, base that we would like to stay on the existing footprint. However, to be back 25 feet, it would cause that you would need to go back in the house in that area. One of the options Bruce and I had talked about, he said if it was unlivable space, then it could possibly be an addition that goes up or, you know, thinking outside of the box because we were really adamant about we'd really like to have an addition to have more space. Well, so basically, it, 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 it would... It couldn't be floored over. That would be the. Yeah. I'm sorry, Bruce. Could you speak into the it microphone? It would have to be. It couldn't be floored over. It would have to be completely. Uh, you couldn't get at it even. Uh, it's similar to a. Um, I allow. If somebody's going up with a with a third floor and they've got a pitched roof, and they got the little knee wall, how they that space behind them, if they block that off completely, then the, the square footage is. It's, for the setback purposes, is measured to that knee wall, and that, so that triangle isn't counted. Mm -hmm. So this was just an option uh, if, if all else failed, if, if the com comparables, you found that there was any issue with that, then, then this would be a fallback position, possibly. But we would prefer not to do this, of course, but it was something that was given as an option. So just let me make sure I understand this schematic. This is looking down from the sky at the footprint of the building. Correct. And this proposal is to kick the addition out towards the back? No, it's actually to cut the house at an angle and not use that prop part of the house to be able to build an addition to go up. It's a very odd proposal. I wouldn't want to do this. However, yep. we are interested in having an addition, and that was one of the discussions about possibility coming to you. I think with this scenario, too, correct me if I'm wrong, Bruce, but it wouldn't require a variance on the front setbacks. Because it would make it 25 feet from the front of the road. This is what it would look like according to what the town would want to see without a variance. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's not the bottom practical. line is that kind of area really couldn't be built and just set there. I mean, you'd have to probably cut it off. But I mean, little, little areas. Bruce, we're having a hard time hearing you. I don't understand. Small areas that, that are under the eaves or, or something like that, we, we don't, usually it's not that much, much of an issue or any issue for increasing square footage, but I, I would have reservations too. If you built that whole 
thing and then try to block that off. I think that could be a problem. Mm -hmm. But uh, we're not there yet anyway, so. Right. So let's. So if you keep going with the, um, the packet, you'll see our house up for Kettle Cove Road, mm -hmm. with the foot, foot, well, the, what the house looks like now. If you turn the page, you'll see um, lot 40 of U16, what it looked like and what it has been made into with the addition and increase of square footage to 2,261 feet, square feet. If you turn the page again, lot 41, where they've increased and actually are now going for another um, addition on the right-hand side of their house to 1,968 uh, 1, square feet. And I believe they're under the process right now. I'm not mistaken of working on their addition of two is another one. Then if you turn, this is the family of the, the Muse family who wrote the letter. They went on lot 48 to 2,823 square feet for their addition. You turn the page again. This house, lot 53, has gone to 2,094 square feet. Very similar homes with ours, except for they all also have garages that we don't have. And then you turn again. Um, lot 63 with 2,172 square feet. Once again, another addition where they had the garage as well. And the last page is lot 59, Sandberg House, which is now 1,632 square feet with the increased addition above the garage in their home. I wanted to just show similar types of properties to sure. mine and what's been done in the neighborhood surrounding us. I just had some questions. Um, first question is for Bruce. Bruce, as I understand it, with needing a side setback of eight feet, my understanding is what we have here is a setback issue, not a square footage issue. Or square footage, it's a setback problem, not a square footage problem. Not quite following your lines. Well, as I understand it, when we turn over to for comparison numbers to the comparable properties, she indicates that as far as square footage goes, 51% um, of properties are greater than the 1744 she's looking for, right? It's all based on square footage, yeah. yeah. So we don't have a problem. She meets the requirements there. Okay. We don't have a problem what? I can't hear you either now. The, she meets the test as far as the request she's making is um, within the standard that more than 50% of the other properties are greater than that square, square footage. If you, use the, if you use the 10 foot, but it, in, reality, in reality it's 8 foot, then, then it was all figured at 10 feet, and I don't believe that you... The square footage is figured at... No, the square footage... Oh, square footage, you're, you're okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. So square footage is not the issue. Right. What's the issue is the side setback. Correct. Correct. Okay. And the side setback is an issue because, as I understand it, when you did these comparisons, you were assuming that your side setback would be 10 feet when, in fact, it's 8 feet. Correct. So when you count 8 feet, if you're looking for comparisons of property that are eight feet or less for a side setback, um, there is less than 50% of the abutting properties that have eight feet or less. Correct. So that's the problem, right? It, yes, correct. I was, at the time, there wasn't a problem until the other day when we realized when that. When you figured that out it was correct. eight feet. Okay. Right. Mr. Chairman, uh, you just made a statement that you didn't feel like there's any problem with square footage comparison? The only comment I have, it, and it's a significant deviation from our practices in the past, is that two different selection groups were used for the setback and the square footage. She, she used, they used uh, 29 comparative prop, comparison properties for the side and front setback and used 51 properties uh, for the square footage. And just, I am, would like the applicant to explain. We, we've never been faced with two different comparison groups. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to know your reasoning, your logic behind that. And um, I believe this is the map for your square foot comparison, is that correct? Yes, the one that at the side says 51% greater than or equal to 1744 square foot. Um, if your property is 
here. 7A. Uh, I would think that a, to draw a, an increasing radius around your property it would be a, a typical selection group. That's what we've been presented with in the past, and, and the ordinance alludes to that by saying not less than the 10 nearest property. Uh, for you to use down here as a comparison group is a bit of a mystery to me. So if you could explain why you use two different comparison groups. Sure. When I um, actually went to go in for the questioning about the variance, I was, we had talked about what is my neighborhood, and um, Bruce had chatted a little bit about my neighborhood being Kettle Cove Road. And so then I went back, I was doing research, and I was doing a little history on where the house was developed and what happened and looking at the property of the farmland that had been subdivided and actually seeing that my house was more of part of Kettle Cove as well as the opening to Crescent View. So when I did that, I looked at Kettle Cove Road as well as Crescent View, and when I did the side setbacks, I just looked at similar houses in the neighborhood of my setback and where it was placed because of the time it was built. The, some of the houses on the lower 20 through 18 have been there for, 20 has been there 100. Oh. What, what we're accustomed to seeing and what I would like to see is you pick one group of properties mm -hmm. and use those as your comparison group. And instead of using 29 to compare one and 51 to compare, that's a pretty big difference in a comparison group, mm -hmm. 29 versus 51. And, and, and some in 10, it's defeating, I think, the... The, uh, the, the, the theory of using properties closest to you as a, as a neighborhood, not on the same street, way down the street, but in, in, you know, in, in your cluster. Mm -hmm. And so I would have liked to have seen 29. You pick 29, that's fine, and then let's use that as a comparison and run the numbers on that. Is it, 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 Mr. Smith, is that a... Is, is, is that not typical of what we've done in the past for comparison groups? Is yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's been customary to, to use a set of comparables for both, both prongs. Okay. Could you make those numbers, uh, uh, could, uh, would those numbers justify your argument? I would have to I would, go, I'd hope go they back would. I would that. like to see that they would. Yeah. I would hope they would. Yeah. I, I don't know. I'd have to go back and go through each one individually and check. I mean, I don't have my calculator here to go through and average them up and look at that right now. I mean, I could. If you want, we could go through each one looking at the properties. Um, what happens when you use the properties on the other side of Bowery Beach Road? I, I haven't done the data on the other side so those of Those are very large houses over there, they so are. square footage would be favorable. Correct. I'm sorry? I'm saying uh, square footage, I think it would be favorable for us. They're yeah. much larger houses. Yeah. But I think, you know, realistically, we don't consider that to be our neighborhood. Yeah. I understand the radius concept, but um, the only time we cross uh, Bowery Beach Road is, well, in fact, we don't cross it. Um, we, we enter it in, by vehicle only, so. Yeah. But that is it, those points the, of U18, getting the map of U18 and U17, looking at those properties, there are very large houses, so that would support us in that way yep. if we were to include those. Okay. Like I said, ours is the smallest house in the neighborhood. So. Before we move off the square footage, more comments? Um, Dr. Chapman, or anyone else? No. I, no. Okay. okay. All right, so then moving over to the setback issue. As I understand the setback issue, um, you have less than 50% of the properties with uh, eight feet or less. So, what is your? Do you have? Are you amending your application to modify the construction such that it would be 10 feet from the property line? Yes, we had talked about that. Having it two feet by two feet unlivable space in the corner of the house would be an option, so that we could have. Like what we just discussed a while ago, we proposed on the front of the house. It probably would be more doable on, on the side of the house to make it 10 feet. Yeah. If the livable area was set back from the end of the structure by two. And that would be just on the second floor because the third floor would not be livable space. Right. And maybe um, the code enforcement officer can help us here, Mr. Smith. 
I'm still unclear as to what the justification is for having the exterior of the property be at 8 feet, but the interior being at 10 feet. How does that comply with the requirement that it be less? If you, if you truly look at the definition in the ordinance uh, of setbacks, it, it is to the face. It is to the what? It is to the face. Face of the property. But history, since I've been here, has allowed um, my example of the knee wall triangular. If that it, it didn't have to be counted for the setback, even though the outside facade was in there, that may not be right or wrong, but it is. It is. It has been my common practice. Um, I'm probably using a little more common sense than what I should on that, but um, that's that's the bottom line on that. Yeah. So, from that perspective, it kind of puts you guys in the mind, I know, but, but I can show you many examples of where I've allowed additions um, with the knee walls not beating the setback, that, that area yeah. not beating the setback. Well, let me ask you the question. I mean, this plan shows that it's just the way the house is angled. It's the back right corner that mm -hmm. goes with less than 10 feet from the setback. Correct. Could the construction be done in such a fashion? Of course, I realize that aesthetically it may not be very attractive. That's the problem. But is there some way that the exterior could stay at 10 feet? Have you, in the, have you, looked at the footprint in the past. I thought that's what was typically done, not counting roof, roof overhangs as some Set communities back purposes, do. Yes, the, it, is, it is the face. Uh, but as long as you, if you already have a nonconformance and you want to change your roof, for instance, from 512 to 1012, if I didn't allow that kind of a situation, then they couldn't raise their roof to stop the leak. So, so my common sense approach was that we really, especially with roofs, we really ought to let them have the opportunity to put a steeper pitched roof on, even if it's just going to be attic space, because that would be an additional square footage. But, but, but to block off that, that knee wall triangle, um, otherwise they couldn't do the roof, unless they did a cathedral ceiling. I suppose they could do a cathedral ceiling. So what you're saying, if it was on the ground construction, you would? Uh, I, I probably would. I, I never have allowed an expansion at, at the same point, lateral. I never allowed that. But an upward expansion with certain uh, circumstances. This is, this is somewhat unique. Mm -hmm. But, but um, my rationale was, was that we allow that triangle to, to exist as long as it's completely boxed off and it's not used for anything including storage. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's why I, I said this is a similar situation. And to be honest with you, for, for us looking at it, I mean, four feet is nothing in comparison if we can increase our size from 662 square feet. Two feet. Well, I think we're trying to reach a happy medium, like you said earlier, that, you know, ultimately want the house to look aesthetically pleasing and fit the neighborhood. That's the ultimate goal. So we can certainly shift the next layer over two feet if we need to meet that 10 foot setback. No, I mean, that's what we gotta do, that's what we gotta do. But we're trying to make the house ultimately look like it sure. fits in the neighborhood. Sure. But you know, we're flexible. Did you all consider any plans that would involve um, like a rectangular addition behind the house, uh, like going backwards? Yeah, we have, we're on a very high water table, um, so we've, between a septic system already in the rear of the house and what we've done to address the, the high water table, um, it's nearly impossible for us to expand back, backwards without disrupting all that. Do you know how, what the length of the rectangular of your house is? What do you mean when you say rectangular? The, as you look at the front of the house, how long is it from the left side to the right side? Oh, 31 by straight on down. Okay. Well, it's 32 feet by 20 something. Exactly. 32 feet. 
It's 21 by 32. 32 being the front. Yep. If you look at the CAPE code page, the billing record, building record. So regarding your side setbacks, if we look at eight or less, how many properties do you have to compare it with? There is one, two, three, four, five. These are unknown on this side. Five, five definite, and I'd have to check the unknown side on Kettle Cove Road. No. We already know there's less than 50 percent at eight feet. That's just, that's been a, I think that's been established that it's right. less than less than half. So so that eight feet can't wouldn't meet the standards. Okay. Uh, that's why you know if you if you if you look at the 10 feet, if you don't like my scenario or you don't think it's you're comfortable with that, then then the worst case scenario is that they'd have to they'd have to do something. On the outside, and with a cricket or something for a roof in that corner, I don't know how you'd do it. But. Okay, understood. Then if we go, the next step would be ten feet with with ten the, feet. The right, that's on. what the whole application is is okay. is based on. So it's just that the, the ten feet is not where they thought it was. So so I think you should go that that route and not try to establish the eight feet because we know that's not not going to happen. So whether, if, whether it, you cut it off or allow require it to cut off on the outside allow it to be blocked off in the inside that's that's your, your that's, determination that's fine i agree with that now if we look at 10 feet then are we it works. what's our percentage at that point it's right there if you're looking at 10 feet for the side setback it's 52 percent is how much 52 okay. percent it's on the top yeah it's the one you gave okay, me so you're using all of these okay right i see that but you're going to go ahead and use all this whole group of 29 Okay. And, and just to be clear, you're not, you have not amended your application. You're at 10 feet. There was some talk earlier about amending to 8 feet. I just want to be clear on what you're. No, this, the, the setback is 8 feet, right. Right. not 10 feet. Mm -hmm. We can't change. Understood. Mm -hmm. yeah. we and so are you, are you amending your application to 8 or you? No. No, it's actually. I know it's actually eight. Yeah. The application says ten. Correct. Bruce, after it was after the fact, we contacted the surveyor. We believed it was ten. Yeah, we measured the map. Um, you know, the survey map with the scale on it. I did it. I had other people do it. And you know, depending on the thickness of the line, you know, one inch equals twenty feet. So you know, there's a little bit of play there, and we came up with ten. Okay, that's Bruce, what I, I, that's Bruce what I want to Bruce checked it, he said eight. We, we actually then contacted the, the surveyor, and to be honest with you, they did a mathematical calculation, and they came up with eight. Did he bring you anything? Oh, he did? He, oh, yes, he did a mathematical late. calculation, so. So it's. I don't think you would dispute much, that at this point. Yeah. yeah, okay. So eight is established by the surveyor. My thought would be, um, if people have more questions for the applicant to ask your questions. When they're finished, give the rest of the folks an opportunity to comment, um, pro and either for or against, and then discuss the application. Um, and then depending upon how we come out, we can decide where we go from there in our discussions, whether or not we seek further clarification or amendments from the applicant. Does that make sense? Everybody in agreement with that? Good to yeah, I have, I have one question for the applicant. Go ahead. Um, Dr. Chapman was talking about the comparables that you selected. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that occurred to me when, when I was thinking about the neighborhood is the houses um, that you selected on, on the one side of Bowery Beach Road tend to be similar in age and construction style, were built around the same time. And they have <clears throat> maybe aside from the sort of the geographical proximity, they're similar in character. 
but if you go across Bowery Beach Road, some of those houses might be closer, you know, physically to your house, but they're much different in terms of character. And I and so I was wondering if you could kind of describe how how the neighborhood on one side of the Bowery Beach Road differs from the the houses on the other side. Well, I think you researched that. I mean, you're exactly right. The builder that built our house, as well as the ones that you mentioned earlier, were were done at the same time in the 60s, and that was the original neighborhood. And then since then, of course, you know, other houses popped up by other builders. They look differently. They're bigger. You know, they, they conform. Some of our neighbors will speak on behalf as well because they've started off in small houses and then have done additions to their house back probably when they were our age um, to their homes so that they could have more room for their families. Um, and the time frame of when this farm was subdivided and built into lots is comparable to our house. And if you look at the houses, they look aesthetically the same, as well as inside, the materials that were used with them are similar. Not the same. Other questions? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I agree that the comparison across Bowery Beach Road is probably inapplicable. I mean, those are much different uh, houses from those that are on Kettle Cove, Crescent, you know, Ocean and Richmond. I was wondering if you, if you actually, though, went over and looked at Ocean Avenue and Richmond Terrace uh, in terms of houses over there in terms of the comparables. You're really getting out of the neighborhood. Well, I, I, no, I think I disagree with that. I think that, in fact, is the whole neighborhood. Is Richmond, Ocean, Crescent, and Kettle Cove is, in fact, a neighborhood. Uh, I don't think there's any difference between Crescent, Crescent uh, View Avenue and Ocean Avenue. No, the houses are back. Well, I mean, back. You, 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 where do you stop? I mean, you could do the whole town. Well, this is a kind of kind of natural. It's kind of a natural neighborhood by ge by geography. Uh, they got a you big know, you look at eight foot stockade fence separating the two. They don't have anything to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would, just, I would just wonder whether you did go over that far and look, or. Um, I, I began my research in that way and was guided to stay in Crescent View area and Kettle Cove area. Okay. So, but there are very similar houses right now if you've been to Richmond Terrace where they are, they cut off the roof and they're going up a level. Um, the, um, what is the gentleman's name doing the work? Where? Over on Richmond Terrace where they're going up the level right now. Like we had so, um, Ro Romeo. Romeo. Romeo Construction. And you'll see that there's been numerous, numerous houses on Richmond Terrace that have done that. Just in the last. You, you, yeah, you, you, have, you would have trouble with size, though. Um, there's a lot of fairly small houses in that neighborhood. I think you might come into a problem with that. But the if, the board want, if the board thinks that's part of the neighborhood, I mean, they can, they can ask you to get. Well, I think it's hard to tell whether it would help or <laughs> hinder the process. But I was just curious whether you went over there. And Customarily, there's three ways to, to, to compare. One is, is just a simple circumference. Pull everything in. There's no, there's no question at all. Right. Two is to go up and down the street the same distance. You go up 50 feet, go down 50 feet. You go up 75 feet, you go down 75. And if three is the is the harder of the three, and that's that's to try to try to convince the board that what the neighborhood is for the comparisons. And so it it hasn't it it really has never been an issue where you or I don't think we have too much history about going into into a separate neighborhood that has its own entrance. That don't mean you can't, and, and you can send them away to get more information if you felt that was appropriate. Um, I guess I'd be less concerned in that than I would be um, sure. doing there, to, to, to I understand. comparables. I, I think it, 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 in some ways it's, per, it, you know, it's more personal. I mean, I grew up in this area. I, you know, I live on Kettle Cove Road. I mean, I live on uh, Two Lights Road, and I've always thought of that whole thing as a neighborhood. So it's it's kind of just the way I look at it. Okay, fair enough. Before we break, I'd just like to clarify that the um, the variants we're seeking on the right hand side. I think there might be some confusion because we had you know all the statistics based on 10 feet and found that it's eight. So I think we really need to pursue. The eight-foot setback with a potential uh, variation to our structure that we're going to build to meet that 10 feet, be it maybe a knee wall or actually shifting the, 
next levels over. I think that would probably, hopefully, put us in a better position to match what our neighbors have, neighbors have done. Yeah. Uh, but it may compromise the aesthetics. Yeah. I think, um, any of the board members, please speak up, speak up if you feel differently, but I think we're restricted um, from not approving a setback that is uh, that would go to eight feet because you don't have the data to support that right. that's um, less non-conforming than 50% of the abutting properties. So I don't think we could approve you to go there. So then the next question, I guess, is can we approve um, a knee wall arrangement? Mm -hmm. And that's a new one on me. That's the first time I heard that approach. I personally am not that comfortable with that approach, but I don't know if anybody else feels, has any other th further thoughts on that subject? Um, I'm not comfortable with that approach, frankly. Yeah. yeah. So I think, and we may still have other issues about the square footage data that you've given us, but I think I'm pretty comfortable in uh, thinking that this board would not approve the, the request if it's a request for an eight-foot setback. If it's an 10 foot setback, uh, 10 feet to the external exterior of the addition, then that you appear to have the data at least on the setback requirement. Right. So it's up to you to make the decision whether or not you want to amend to just request a 10 foot setback. Right, no, we have to go with 10 at this point. Um, I think eight were rejected. And I advertised at eight feet because we were running out of time, but it, the whole thing is geared to 10 feet. Um, so I don't, I'm not so sure that it has to be an amendment, even though we advertise at eight feet, because that's what, that the whole, everything was already compared at 10 feet. It's just a matter of how the board, if they determine that, that they meet the, the standards, it, it, how the board wants to treat that area, whether they want to rectangle it on the outside or they want to allow boxing off. And either way, it makes no difference to me. As far as the notice goes, I don't think that's a problem because the notice that went out was for a more aggressive application request, a more, a more encroaching request than that, then it would be a 10 foot. And so I don't think the notice is an issue. And it's really up to the applic applicant if you want to think about it or if you want to amend your application now just to be requesting a 10-foot setback, which would require you moving the second floor over two feet, or it might require some kind of carve-out back there. Mm -hmm. That, you know, that would be our pre preference. Like I said, um, having a closed-in area of two feet on the inside would be perfect. That's, that's, or, yeah. but I, or yeah. moving the structure over yeah. would work well for us. I think where the board is is that it would have to be a 10-foot setback to the exterior of the addition. Um, yeah, so. I don't have a problem if, if, if the code enforcement officer recommends that and is comfortable with that as far as establishing or interpreting the guidelines. Since it is a second floor addition, I don't, and the pre-existing footprint mm -hmm. is not being encroached upon. Uh, you're, you're referring to you're comfortable with Bruce's interpretation of a knee wall? That's correct. Well, actually, my interpretation is that it should be to the outside of the wall, but I've used some common sense with roofs. Yeah, I do have that's a... How, that's how I, I came up by this. It, it probably it doesn't meet the, the intent of the audience. Okay. So it's not really an interpretation. It's probably just... Trying to make it work. <laughs> trying to make it work, trying to help them out with a tough spot. The, I do have a question, though, regarding, we haven't discussed the front setback, have we? Have we established that? Because um, their front setback, and it's a little bit confusing, uh, maybe the applicant can explain. Mm -hmm. Your survey that you passed out, as in red, shows 16 feet and right. 20. Uh, the, the one you passed around shows 20. It doesn't show the 16 foot, doesn't show any measurement. And then on your, uh, in your packet, you uh, submitted 
this drawing. And could you explain that to me, please? Again, that reference is 16 feet. Well, then first of all, I believe it's 16 feet to the left um, corner of the structure and 20 to the right. It's kind of on an angle. The survey, the property lines on the the survey it shows the actual measurement by scale, wherever that is. But your application shows 16 right here. Okay, are you amending that also? And this is 16. Uh, and this shows 16 in red. Where you, the, the, the survey you brought me had no measurements on it. I'm just going by where your, your measurements show 16 feet. That's correct. 16 on the, if you're on the left hand side of the house and 20 on the right hand side of the house. Yet on, on your comparable sheet, you, you uh, in your application, Right, it says 20, the front seven. Well, your, your statement on, on the comparison of neighboring properties, and, and again, I'm just trying to understand no, no your, your application material. Comparison of neighboring pro properties to subject property, the second line, which addresses the front setback, you said 59% of properties have front setback uh, less than or equal to 25 feet. Should we not be looking at 16 or 20 feet, not 25? What's the, what does the survey show? That's where I come up with the 20 feet. Well, the, the survey does not have. The survey's missing one. On the survey that was passed like in the packet, the, it has this, written this, in 16 this, this feet. This measurement that I put on here on the right hand side is the closest point, 20 feet. Okay. The variance was written at 20 feet from the property line, but variance is 5 feet. Okay. Now, this is mentioned here over here because it's, it's either the same or greater. So it's the closest point to two advertiser variance for. Which is 16 feet. 20. 20 feet. 20. According to the scale of this survey, okay. I don't know where the 16 feet came from. Okay. I, I, I don't so know came then, from, but I then don't know her, how they come about the, that. The, so. the material that she submitted, which shows 16 feet written right. in, that's incorrect then? And the application shows 16 feet. Right. But if they can meet the standard for 16 feet, they certainly can meet the standard for 16 feet. Yeah, yeah it's 20, point, 20 foot 6 inches on the left hand side, and it's 20 feet on the right hand side. So That's the, the closest point. So the, the application itself needs to be amended also? I'm sorry. The application is wrong, but the advertisement, right. if it meets the 16-foot standard, it's certainly going to meet the 20-foot standard. Okay. Right. But her comparisons don't... Don't support 20 either. They, they, they compare to less than 25. That's my point. The, her 52% says less than 25. It does not even reference 20 feet. I don't know. I don't know we're new at this, sorry. I'm sorry? I'm so, I said we're new at this, sorry. I still we're new at this oh, okay, yeah. whole thing. And, and yeah, you understand the point, right? I, there's a discrepancy. Well, the comparison should have been made originally at the 16 feet that they thought they had. So right. they or now that we're at 20, now it, it appears the survey shows 20 feet. Your comparison should be to the properties that are 20 feet or less on a front setback. Right. Maybe I, think, I don't, I I don't, I don't I have a problem with the 16 versus 20. Let's look at 20 only. Now looking right. at your chart. I think what it was was being that you were saying that you wanted 25 and 25. I went with the 25. So when I gathered the data, I looked at what was less than 25. Do you understand where I'm coming from? I, I, I just do. knew it was the 25 foot setback, so that's where I got the data for that. That's why I comparison it to less than 25 feet of a variance. I wasn't saying 24 feet or less, 23 feet, 16 feet, you know, down like that. I was just doing based on what you needed for a variance is 25 feet. May, may, may I make a suggestion? Please. Uh, I'm suggesting that the board may, may consider, should consider whether they're going to, the compar comparable issue or whether they have different ones. For one and different for the other, and, and so that, that so that, that and then and then maybe suggest that, that they do their application 
re reliant on the 20 front 10 sides. But I, I don't think you should, you know, if you want, want more information, you want to send the applicant away for more information, I don't think you should send them away until you make, you should make a decision on whether you're going to have the same comparables or you're going to allow two different sets of comparables for each prong. I, I don't think you should send them away and without making that decision because they'd be doing an awful lot of work for nothing. So yeah. I agree with that. Well, my impression is, and speak up, board members, if you feel differently, that the application as it's currently postured doesn't give us the data on which we could approve this tonight. Um, that's, anybody have any issue with that basic concept? What did you just say, sir? I said that the application as currently postured doesn't give us the data on which we could approve this tonight. Everybody in agreement with that? I agree. Okay. Now, I know before you had mentioned you would like to see us using possibly the Bowery Beach, or now you've said Richmond Terrace, other things. Could we get a little clarity on what you would like to see? That way I don't spend lots of time looking for things that we don't need. Um, meaning, I don't mind doing it, but researching upstairs on properties that you don't want to include it in the... Yeah. I mean, we don't have really a... Um, let me handle it this way. Traditionally... We, I think Dr. Chapman is right, we've always had one set of data. In other words, you use the same properties for square footage that you use for setbacks. We have not said specifically how many properties you can use. And as Bruce described, there's three different approaches to that. So any of those three are available. So my thought would be we're best off sticking with our traditional protocol, which is you use the same set of data for both purposes, both prongs. Anybody feel differently about that? That's been my experience on the board, and, and, the, and Mr. Smith, code, uh, code officer, has, uh, has said that's been his experience all. Yeah, all mine as well. To use the same sample group. Yeah. We have in the past, yes. Yeah. And I think so. I think that's tr been the tr tr traditional approach. So we've got those two issues, I think, addressed. Then the next issue is, I think, for the applicant, the, is the question of whether or not they could use a knee wall to comply with the setback as opposed to pushing the exterior of the property to 10 feet. And my read, and I think Bruce has indicated as well, the, the, the ordinance doesn't really allow for, if you're dealing with a setback, it has to be to the exterior of the property, not the, not the inside knee wall, because you're dealing with a setback issue, not a square footage issue. Or if you're dealing with a square footage issue, I think a knee wall might answer that problem. But when you're dealing with a setback, it's to the exterior. Can I ask, too, I know we say based on tradition or based on what's done, why... Um, what happens with like the original footprint or grandfathering in with that? Can you explain a little bit about that, how that goes? Like based on the house itself, we're not changing the square, I mean, we're not changing the footprint. Is that traditionally, it's not being changed, it's just going up. So now we're saying we can't stick with the same footprint we have to change. I'll let Dr. Chapman Mr. Bruce address that. Well, any expansion um, by square footage uh, has to, has to be done and meet the setback. If it doesn't, the only thing that's grandfathered is what's existing. Foot, same <coughs> square footage uh, at the same location. So any expansion would require a variance, even though it's not going closer. Okay. So I mean, that's, that's the, the ordinance used to go so far as actually have pictures of that situation, they take sense taking them out. There are a lot of towns that do allow an upward expansion or even an outward expansion at, as long as you don't go close. And that, that is an allowance in this town for shoreland within 75 feet. But it, it's clear from the prior audiences, even though the pictures aren't in here, if you go back into history, historically, every, all, all the audiences up to the last three or four editions, which is, is really fa fairly close because we have a lot of changes, uh, you'll find that, that uh, 
traditionally um, that was the case. I'd, I'd like to make a comment to the applicants. I, I, I've been on the board for a while, and, and uh, one thing that I've noticed about our board when, is that over the years we do everything we can to support the application. I mean, we really do. I, I've, I've witnessed other boards in other towns and other states, and sometimes the boards do everything they can to block, you know, just to be almost mean about it. We, and I don't know whether I should say I pride ourselves, but I pride the time I've been on the board that we've bent over backwards to try to make things work, to try to look at angles to, to, to make it work. But at the same time, we are bound by the ordinance to follow the guidelines that the town and the town council and the city has adopted. Uh, the ordinance, the, the, the portion of the ordinance that is affecting you, and, and I, if all, you all will allow me to read this, significant economic injury is defined by <clears throat> placing the applicant for variance at a disadvantage to the neighborhood by applying zoning ordinance standards which would prevent the applicant from having a structure or accessory structure comparable in size, location, and number to those of other lot owners in the immediate neighborhood, and, and that's the word, two words we're looking at, immediate neighborhood, mm -hmm. but in no case fewer than the 10 nearest property owner. So the, the, the whole, and we have actually, on the time that I've been over the board, on the board, and we used to look at front and side setbacks as the same. Now we've, and left versus right, we have actually relaxed the interpretation of those rules. Side setbacks affect neighbors. You know, maybe your neighbor doesn't want your house being expanded too close to their property. Uh, not the case in your, uh, in front setbacks don't affect neighbors, they affect traffic flow and openness, openness in neighborhood and, and and safety and other issues. So we divided that out in an effort to relax the interpretation of it. So my point is, and, and what has been customary according to the code enforcement officer and to my time on the board is that take a sample. You, you have to have at least 10, that's what the ordinance says. You can have 15, 20, 50, just, but take one group and let's look at all of those. That's your immediate neighborhood. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't think I've ever seen one in the 50s, but that's okay. I don't have a problem with that. But take a, take a sample and compare your propo proposed plans to the immediate neighborhood, and let's sample and compare those. Mm -hmm. now, we want to try to help you make this work. Mm -hmm. Believe me, that's our intent. And I know everybody on the board, and, and, but we also have to follow the, the ordinance. And, and sometimes you have to get creative and we have to get creative to, to make it work. So I don't know if that little dialogue helps any, right. but, but that's my concern, is I would like to see one, and I think the board has echoed it, we'd like to see one sample. Okay. It has to be more than 10, right. it has to be a 10 closest. You can't pick and choose you know, this house and this house that meet and use that as your 10 sample. If you use 10, you have to use the immediate closest. Mm -hmm. Closest, and we, we, we're not real hard-nosed on that either, but just your immediate neighborhood. See if you can find a representative sample that fits the side, the front, and the square footage, and I assure you, we'll support it if, if, if you're comparables. But we, as a board, I'm speaking for myself, and I hope I'm speaking as a board, the, the, the ordinance says it has to be comparable. And we've actually relaxed that. We used to say six out of 10, now we're saying five out of 10. I mean, 50% period. That's comparable to your immediate neighborhood. And, and if half of, you know, you're at the 50% point, then you're right at the mean of your neighborhood, the median of your neighborhood in, in those comparables. So if you can meet that one somehow with your sample size, with a, you know, a, a straightforward sample size, one group, if you can meet that criteria, We'll be happy to pass okay. it. And you want me to meet that for the square footage, the front back setback, and the side setback, all right. three of those uh, with that one? We, we, 
we, we've accepted the 10 feet side setback. That's, that's okay, fine. That's awesome. Everybody's in agreement with that. Now, one of my questions on the front setback, I think that was it. When we had talked earlier, it was the, the smallest of the one that you had to prove the most, almost. Like, meaning, does that make sense to you? The minimum. The minimum of that you had to prove the most. So we proved the 10 foot. So looking at the 25 feet now. Um, it's 20. 20 for the front. Right. It is what you're asking. Correct. To, to construct new construction at 20 feet. So. Right. Where I'm, where I'm a little mistaken. What I was believe, what I was believing is that, out of the front and the side setbacks, the one with the most difficulty of, of the feet was the, you know, 10 feet, you know, to to prove that, and that was proven. The minimum of all setbacks. Right. So now what you're saying is I also have to prove that 50% or more have 20%. I mean, 20 feet front setback. Right. 20 feet or less. Okay. And and that's how the the the, 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 the three key words comparable, which we've established at 50 percent, mm -hmm. and immediate neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So that's all you you need to do is is comparable that's and and, and but it has to if I, you're only I asking think, for side setback. I think setback, if we had comparable, asking, right? If we had a comparable house in a comparable lot, then it would then be okay. Then we could compare, but this, we don't have a lot like everyone else. We don't ours have. Ours is an anomaly. But. It's a very unique house, you know, and, and where it's set up, you're not going to find that. You're not going to find a comparable house with a comparable lot that's going to make 50%. We, no, well, one, no one has a lot like ours. No, and I know <laughs> that. And, and it, it's silly. You know, but it's a silly but lot. we're not talking about the house a lot. We're just talking about the setbacks. Right. And, and you have an unusual situation. Right. But to go out and to find that is going to be very difficult is what I'm saying. I don't know if I'm going to be able to find that based on the, the lot itself in the house. I mean, you're asking to find something that possibly won't be there, and that's why I was just saying, if we go in and research Richmond Terrace, is that going to help? Is it going to help doing Bowery Beach Road? I don't think so, because if you look at our lot, look at 7A. I mean, look at the way it's set up. I mean, the lot, no one has a lot like that. No one has their house set so close to the road and to the side. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. just offering my one subjective. Right, no, and I, under I understand yeah. that. I think it just goes back to when they originally approved the setback of eight feet back at one point in time, and now it's at our expense. And, right. And it well, it was probably built deal. before they had setback requirements. And it wasn't such a big deal when we bought the house, but now we're in the process of trying to expand our families. Sure. So now it's like pack a bag. You've got to grow in family, so. Yeah, so that's really what it boils yep. down to. What, a uh, couple thoughts. One is you meet the requirement at 25 feet. It appears you don't meet it at 20 feet front setback. Query, could you push the, the second story back five feet? Maybe you have a porch or something on the top side. And you push it out off the back five feet. Thought. Another thought is, you raise an interesting question, uh, Ms. Bucci, which is, can you interpret the statute, the ordinance, um, to be, uh, it's always, it always has troubled me a little bit, which is the issue you raised, um, which is the issue of, it's at 10 feet now, or whatever it is on the front side. If you're just going up, and you're not coming any closer to the line, does that, is that really, uh, require an, uh, a variance. It, we've always interpreted it that it does. But you have a new ordinance that just came out June, and we're always willing to listen to arguments based upon the language of the ordinance. And if you can figure out whether or not, if you can figure out a reason why our interpretation is wrong, we're certainly w willing to listen to that. And Bruce is certainly willing to listen to that. So no, we'll it, take a look the at that. The ordinance address that. It, it don't, 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 I don't think you should suggest that she tries to find something in the audience that, that, that would change that because there isn't anything in there that would change that. There's no, there's no changes to that. Well, we're always willing to listen to, to we're, our job is to apply the ordinance, and that's what we look at. So I encourage you to look at the ordinance because that's what we, controls our decision making. I just wanted to ask um, Bruce Smith a question. Uh, on this knee wall theory, I mean, I just wanted to try to explain it and see if this is what, you, what if I understand it right. Um, you allow people to change their roof lines, even if it means built, extending the exterior walls by, say, four feet and changing the pitch of the roof without a variance because that's not living space. Is that your practice? I, I, 
I, I have allowed because it, the, there's no other alternative. If you want to get a pitch roof, for instance, it will shed water instead of setting there. Um, I've allowed a knee wall, the knee wall space, instead of using it for storage, I've allowed that not, not to be counted, provided you can't have access to that area. Okay, yeah, I'm just trying to figure point. out how it how it fits in with the ordinance. What um, you know, what's the justification for doing that? And I thought it was that that you were allowing people to change the roof lines and and make changes to the structure of the house without getting a variance. Like they could go up, say, four feet on their exterior walls, and if they were just well, the difference between between what what I was thinking on this and the roof is it is it you're not really creating, you're going, you're pulling away from the line, uh, and you're not really creating floor area in that usable floor area at all in that triangle. So it's really probably unique to just the roof. It's justifiable in that uh, if you had a cathedral ceiling, right, with no floor, you'd allow the roof to, to go up within the setback and theoretically, at any given point, if it doesn't meet the setback going up the roof, if I didn't allow that, then it, you know, every roof would have to have a variance. So this right. So, so they could, they could, they could add, they could do the exact same project they're showing here, but if they, if, if, if they didn't add a second floor in there on the inside. Right. What he meant. It well, what I'm interpreting well, is, is it's a box. That's what I was. That's what I was. You can't I step was, inside the box. You know, it's a wall that comes out, so it's the unlivable space. So it's not a compromise, but it makes it look better. I, 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 I hear that the, you know, I, I'm not so sure that I'm really as comfortable as I used to be with that. <laughs> um. All right. Just to recap, I think where we are. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, the data needs to be. We have. We require the same survey for both purposes for square footage and setback. Now, you said you require that before you said it's traditionally done this way. It wasn't saying it was required. Historically, it's been done this way. It didn't say required to be done this way. Is that correct? Um, well, I, I think the board is unanimous in its view that um, we're not comfortable approving an application that has one set of data right. for, for square footage and a different set for setback. Okay. You can submit anything. But right. You can submit it. Right. And that's, that's telling you they're not going right. to probably work in the past, but it's probably not going to work now. I'm just so trying to save you some time. Right. And you can submit anything you want. I'm just trying to help, yeah. help you understand what might get approved. I understand. I, just in other aspects, it has been approved with different data in the past. Maybe not when you've been on it, but in the past, in the record. I'm unaware of any I've variance. I've a lot of hours up there. So. Oh, yeah? There's yeah. some variance with two separate sets of data? Correct. Well, like I, I told uh, you, Tara, that yep. with the old hardship criteria, it was how the wind was blowing, and that wasn't necessarily fair, but uh, since the advent of the new practical difficulty, it's a standard that it's just reasonable. Mm -hmm. And the board has paid attention to that, whereas before, if nobody was objected, unfortunately, well, fortunately for the applicant, they, they'd get a variance, and right. the system was really bad. And, mm -hmm. and it didn't happen just here. It happened everywhere. Um, so I used to tell people that, you know, you're only going to lose is your time in, your, in 100 bucks or 150 bucks, um, and you got a 50-50 chance. Well, and it's your time as well, and it's a lot of time, so I don't want to waste time for anyone. Well, we're here to do this for you, and um, we, this is not a problem. This is not an unreasonable request. Yeah. And I, I appreciate your conundrum, because you do have a difficult lot to deal with. And as one of the board members has already said, our goal is not to deny you the right to develop your property. But unfortunately, right. the new ordinance that went into effect several years ago requires kind of a mathematical approach to take the subjectivity out of it. And so that's what we're faced with. It, and I, I understand that, but I'm just saying that it's not written that it has to be from the same data. And 
in the past, and I know you say historically based on you, but historically based on the evidence upstairs in the records, it shows that data has been used from different things. That's why I presented it in that way, because it was in favor and support. So I could say, I've got more than 50% here, I've got more than 50% here. Sure. Let's look at this, let's move sure. forward. Right. As a teacher in the community, you'd want your teacher living here. Right. Well, it's your choice what you want to do today. Um, I think the board has expressed three concerns. One is with the right side setback, it would have to be pushed to 10 feet. Yep. Uh, the front setback, you don't have, um, you haven't shown us that there is the comparable data to justify the front side setback of 15 feet. Correct, because we are told go with the smallest one that you're fighting for of the setback. So that was the 10 foot. So now we'll show the 20 foot on the right. front. So there's that issue. And, um, and the survey data, um, the issue of the survey data, data being comparable, using the same data or yep. different data. And that's for you to make that decision. I mean, you have every right to submit an application with whatever data you think is appropriate, and the board will consider it and make a decision. But at least you've gotten to hear sort of um, some comments of the way the board's looking at that issue. Correct. And Mr. Howitt said, looking also at Richmond Terrace and Ocean Avenue as well, so I could do some research there and see if that supports us in that. Sure. Now, would that be considered our neighborhood and across the street at Bowery Beach? Because rather than me go do that, is that agreeable by the board? That Bowery Beach Road and Ocean Avenue and Richmond Terrace would be considered in the scale for neighborhood? I don't know that, you know, people can comment on it if they want. I think it's up to you to come back with a set of data that you think makes sense, make your best pitch as to why you think it does make sense, and then we'll vote on it, yay or nay. I, I would, I think that's right. I mean, to me, I've been over in that area, and the houses on the one side are, seem to be a neighborhood for a lot of reasons that you guys described, mm -hmm. that they're built around the same time, the same style, same type of, uh, um, lots that are different various sizes whereas on the other side they tend to be um, bigger lots newer homes that were built you know, well because they're newer they're much right. built much later and they're larger so that they don't have the same issues and the same characters that other side so i personally wouldn't have a problem with you going down um, one more street and and I, I agree with that that a highway effectively is a boundary for a neighborhood and you know for many reasons and that's a, a state highway. So, you know, that's not necessarily part of your neighborhood across the street because children don't cross highways to, you know, to, you, you understand what I'm saying. Now, I, I'm always reluctant to suggest looking at different things because you know what you want and need in your house construction. I mean, you, you're adding two stories to it. Is it and you say you don't want to expand backwards. How old is your septic system, for example? Our septic system is new. It was eight, eight years old, approximately. What? Approximately eight years old. Eight years old, okay. Yeah. Uh, and this is just throwing out ideas, troubleshooting. If you can't make your numbers work, then look at it from a different standpoint, and I'm sure you've thought of this. Instead of making it three stories, make it two. Uh, septic system, new septic systems are seven thousand dollars are in that neighborhood that's a lot of money but if it if by if you're with the wetlands and the, and the water table and all if that permits you to push your septic back and you expand rear rearward where you don't have a setback issue you could get your square footage or even more now that's a total deviation from what your intent is to go up two stories you may not like that idea I'm just suggesting that, and you probably thought of all these reasons, but you know, if, if you can put in a new septic system for $7,000 and get all the expansion you won't need by going backwards, that may be your answer. It costs you $7,000 more, but you know, that's, that is a one potential solution. Due to the, um, the house where it's situated, it is on a high water table because of the situation with the drainage. One of the reasons why Jeff was late was with the rainstorm. So we put in a drain system to remove the water from underneath the house back into the back part of the lot. So there's a drain system that's been built underneath where, behind the house. So it would not only be a new septic, it would be a whole new backyard drain system to remove the water. You know your characteristics yeah. of your lots. And, no, but thank and you for thinking of other ideas. 
But Anybody want to buy a house? What? Anybody want to buy a house? <laughs> I'm just trying to no, I agree throw out that. I'm ideas, kind of joking, so. but it's, it's almost becoming reality. I, I think that's a wonderful neighborhood. I, it is. I, I yeah. hope you can make it work. Oh, speaking of which, though, because we don't want to have to have them come back. Can neighbors speak now so they don't have to come back when we do this again? Sure. Okay. Any other folks that want to speak in support of the application? If you could identify yourself for the record, please. I'm Catherine Miller. I used to live on 7 Crescent View, and I was a former board member a couple years ago. Um, I recently moved from the neighborhood, but I'm familiar with this property, and I'm familiar with the need to get a variance. And I remember when we were on the board, the, uh, my recollection was that we were considering how many properties were already in violation of the setbacks which would then look at the, the number of houses that are already within the side setbacks, um, which is a, a higher number, it's 60%. My recollection wasn't that the board had to interpret that the properties, that this variance, of, in this case, the eight-foot variance, I know she's amended it to, she, she hasn't amended it to eight, but let's just work with the hypothetical. My recollection is that the interpretation of the ordinance doesn't have to be such that there needs to be 50% of other properties with the same exact variance um, requirement, a variance amount. It was more the larger issue of are there 50% of the nearer prop, the 10 properties that already are within violation of the traditional setback. So in that case, in looking at that the broader interpretation of the statute, the board would have to then look at the Gucci's petition and say, are, uh, of the, the properties that she's given you, the 29 properties in the Crescent View area, are at least 50% of them already in violation of the side setbacks? And I think the board would have to say yes. And clearly, I think Crescent View is a good neighborhood. I think that the Gucci's have some work to do as the board's outlined, as the board's decided. However, Crescent View is very similar. I think it was the same builder, the same time frame as in the 50s. There were small houses. And when you look at Crescent View, the houses that have expanded, unilaterally have expanded regardless of the variance, of the sizes. I mean, there are several houses that have gone up. And in each case, I think they looked at, are they increasing the nonconformity such that it's increasing the footprint, or is it just a matter of going up? And similarly, the Bucci's aren't increasing their footprint. Um, I think because of the unique nature of their property, it's very difficult to go back. And it would be very expensive. It's more foundation, more drain, more septic, more roof. There's a lot of things that would cause the going back difficult. So when you look at the economic hardship that they would have, as well as the other standards set out in the variance application, there is no feasible alternative for them. It has no negative impact. There's nobody opposing this petition, this application. And again, my interpretation isn't that the 10 properties nearby need to have the same exact variance amounts. It can be just that they're already in violation and that they've already would be granted a variance. And I don't think that the interpretation has to be that narrow. So just would like to submit that. And again, I think many houses in this area neighborhood in this have had to expand. It's, they're really small. I, I submit 600 square feet is a small amount to be living in. Um, put a child into that and baby equipment, and it, it's worth having them stay. And so if there's any interpretation that can be, if the board can more liberally construe the interpretation because they're not restricted, I, I would encourage them to do so. Thanks. Thank you. Anyone else want to speak in favor? Hi, Scott Irving at 27 Crescent View Ave. Uh, so, I, yeah, the neighborhood is, I think what they picked is pretty, pretty well describes the neighborhood. It's really the, the group of people, the kids play together, the people who live on the block socialize together. Um, yeah, I don't know that many people cross, cross Bowery Beach, either on the adult level or on the child level. 
Um, and it's pretty, I, I personally, don't, I'm not even sure about, I know a couple people on Richmond, but I kind of know their name, and that's about it. Uh, whereas most people on the block uh, know each other's name. A lot of us let ourselves into each other's houses because nobody cares. Uh, <laughs> it's a pretty tight neighborhood. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, you know, I guess in support of that, that is, you know, that whole area is, is I would say, is definitely a neighborhood. It, it has the characteristics of a neighborhood. And, uh, you know, Kathy was talking about the other expansions. There's been a bunch of the houses that have gone up. Uh, I would say you know, I've been there for 28 years. It has been to the advantage of the neighborhood. It has added to the neighborhood. It's added to the characteristics of the neighborhood. Uh, it's, it's a nicer neighborhood, if you will, because of, of what's been done. I think what they're planning on doing would, would just continue to add to that, uh, given the trees and everything on the property, even if it's going to be, I think somebody alluded to, a lot of height for the width. Uh, I, I think it would, if it was a farm field, I think that would might not work, but being the trees that are in that area, I think would that would work pretty well. Um, and even on the variance, and we're talking about a corner, we're not even talking about the entire wall. That a corner pokes in by two, sticks out by two feet in, so if we look at that, and we're, we're talking about three square feet, it's not a whole lot of house that violates that setback. So uh, to me, to me, it, just one of those things that just, yeah, it sticks out there and certainly makes sense to let that, I would think, let that go, but uh, I can't, can't make that decision. So anyway, my thoughts. Thank you. Thank you. Um, anyone else? Hi, I'm Nancy Irving, and I also live at 27 Crescent View Ave. Um, I'm convinced now that I would never want to sit in any of those seats over there <laughs> that listening to today. Um, I want to speak on behalf of the Bucci's. Um, when my husband and I moved into the neighborhood 28 years ago, our house was probably one of the largest houses in the neighborhood. We had a garrison where all the others were ranches except for two others. And we've seen a lot of expansion and um, I think it's been to the better in the neighborhood because we've attracted great families. And um, it just gives such a great feeling, as my husband said. Um, we're really a close neighborhood. We look out for each other. We look out for the kids. We drive slowly because we know there's going to be kids in the neighborhood. We, we have backyard barbecues together. And the Bucci's are always included in that. So. They truly are our neighbors and part of our neighborhood, and we would hate to lose them um, because they can't fit into the house anymore. Aesthetically, carving out walls and shifting and just doesn't make any sense to me at all. Um, just going straight up and making it look like the other houses in the neighborhood. I know you have to do what you have to do because you've got regulations, but it really um, aesthetically, I don't think it could be as pleasing as just letting them build up. So I would ask you to take into consideration what has been done in the neighborhood um, that it increases the value of our way of life. If not our property values, our way of life. So I would speak on behalf of them. Thank you. Anyone else want to speak in support? Anyone, anyone here to speak in opposition? Um, one comment I would make is just, I appreciate all the comments that were made, um, but think about a property. This property is, I guess, the front setback is about 15 feet. They could conceptually go up, 30, the ordinance allows a 30, 35 feet height, I think it is. Is that right? Sorry? 35 feet is the height of the ordinance? Height, yeah. yeah. So take the situation where you had a house that was grandfathered in at 10 feet, and that was only one story, and suddenly you're raising it to 35 feet straight up, 10 feet back from the road. How's that going to look? So that's kind of the issue we're faced with, which is, um, you know, what's good for the goose is good for the gander, and that's why the, the rule's been there that it has to be um, 
less non-conforming than 50% of its neighbors so that you don't create a situation where if there's um, somebody, one of the people speaking in support proposed that as long as it was, um, if there were other properties that were non-conforming, that somehow meets the test. And you have to realize that opens the door for the situation where the, the, the most non-conforming property could suddenly have a structure that goes up 35 feet. It may be five feet from the side setback or five feet from the set, front setback. So I just throw that out there for food for thought. Um, I guess the question for the applicant is, do you want us to, con to continue this application to next session? Do you want to withdraw the application and resubmit? Um, how do you want to proceed today? Or do you want us to vote on this application? I assume you don't want us to vote on this application today. Do you want us just to roll this application over with your right to come back and reamend, or do you want to with withdraw it and resubmit the application? When we roll it over, is there another meeting? What is the time frame that I get to pass through this? Um, There's no fee. It no will fee. be scheduled for the next month. If you want it scheduled for the next month, if you need more time, we can just continue it generally. Sure. Sure. Yeah, you can. Ju we'll just continue. Is there, is there a limit to the time, like the, you know what I'm saying? Um, that it expires? I'm not sure. Bruce, do you know the answer to that? How much time do you need? I mean, well, I, don't have I, don't, I don't think there's any history of somebody. I mean, you can table uh, and have it hanging out there. Uh, there's no ordinance that can say you can't do that. Right. I just, I don't need to, I guess, work. Have you ever heard? Yeah. Well, we'll just table it generally, and when you're ready for us to bring it back on for a vote, you let us know. And if, if you want to amend it, you just submit it amended papers to Bruce. So we're not going to set a firm date. If that's what I hear the applicant say. set a firm date unless, if you don't set a date here at this hearing, then I have to do the, all the advertisement over again. So we've got to roll it over from date to date? You either, if they want to. They want till February, then vote that we will pair it in February, and that's it. Is that what you want to do? February? Yes, or March. I mean, I, <laughs> I don't want to push You can set it. We don't. I can't take a day off of work to come. Sure. We don't care. It's up to you. You can set it for February, and if that's not going to work, you let Bruce know, and at the February meeting, we'll just, as part of the uh, um, business, old business, we will move it for another month, right? If you don't have a meeting, if you say February, I can't just defer it till March without holding that meeting. And if we don't have any other applications, you're going to hold a meeting just for you're hold the meeting just, anyway. just to table it. I would like prefer to to have a firm date set so that when they're going to come back. Okay. So is it? Can you give us a firm date when you want us to consider it? March would be great. That gives me. Okay. Does that work, Bruce? We'll set it down for March. The public has got notice based on the fact that this meeting was public. Okay. Sure. And that, that doesn't create a problem. And we have the surrounding neighbor's signatures and things like that. So that we, have, we have not heard of any opposed, and I'm sure you would have heard of some of the very opposed. So. Right. Okay, we'll consider it continued till March meeting. Do you need a motion, Mr. Mayor? Yeah. Oh, okay, we're still. Um, Go ahead. I don't think we need a motion. She's requested it be rolled over and continued to the March meeting. I don't think there's anything to vote on. Um, Mr. Chapman, did you have Are you comment? through with that portion? I believe we are, yes. I, I just want to make a couple of comments. So the, the last lady that came up and spoke, I want to thank you for your compliments. I, I mean, your comments. I think they were very valid. I think they made a lot of sense, and I can understand your feelings and the neighborhood feelings, 100%. The, the ordinance is the issue and and we can't turn our backs on the ordinance because of every true thing that you said i, I really want you to understand that and, and thank you uh, ms miller welcome back you know my term is expiring at the end of this year i'm expiring at the end of we would we would love to have you back permanently but in response to your in response to your comments, uh, if, if I understood it correctly, you, you said if any one uh, property is uh, 
does not conform, then it doesn't matter to the degree of the conformity. It, it, would you go? It, it, you need to go to the microphone, or they'll, or they'll fuss at you for. But because I don't, I'm not sure I follow your logic, I and I just. Real, and it's been a while. I admit, Dr. Chapman, but what we looked at was, in looking at if I wanted a side variance. I would look at the other properties in my neighborhood and I would say how many of these properties are already non-conforming and already are within the side setback or beyond the side setbacks. Without concern of how yeah, much they're even, not concerned. And, I, and my recollection was and this, the ordinance doesn't require the board to say there needs to be 50% of other properties with an eight foot Side but let me just challenge your your argument, if I may. It, you're saying the the, the, the sideline setbacks at 25 feet. It, okay. So if, if if an existing property is at 24 feet, they are violating the the setback. So they they're non-conforming. If they were to want to increase the property and go up, they would need a variance. I but think if, we can agree to that point, right? You're saying that if they're at 24 feet, they're non-conforming. I would agree with that. Yes. And you don't care. It, Anything less than 25 non-conforming. So if I understand your comments correctly, if you take the 10 nearest properties, and they were, this isn't going to happen, but they were all 24 feet, and I wanted to put a garage, and I'm at 24 feet, well, 100% of my neighbors are non-conforming. But I want to put a two-car garage, and it's 10 feet from the property line. Under your argument, you say that's okay for me to, because 100% of my neighbors are non-conforming, then I can build a two-car garage that's within 10 feet of the property line, not 24 feet of the property line. I think a couple things. The, you're not, you, you can't lose sight of the other standards within the variance standard, which are, would it be creating an economic hardship? You know, is it a negative impact? Are the other properties similar? Is it creating a different characteristic to the neighborhood? So if your situation is somebody is building a two-car garage or make, make it more, a three-car garage, within 10 feet, everybody else is only a smidden already in the side setbacks. I think you have to look at, do they need the two-car garage? Is there a reason? Are the other houses with two-car garage? And really compare to see the merits of it. I don't think this is just a numbers game for the board. And that's why the numbers isn't the only, only standard within your variance application. Your variance application includes environmental factors, in negative, uh, the neighborhood characteristics, the, negative, the economic impact on the petitioner. It compares um, the other numbers. So I don't see, I think there are a lot of numbers weight is being put on the eight foot rule. We're not now, talking eight, it's 10, but that's. Well, I, but I'm, I'm saying they should be allowed, they're, they're saying 10. Because the board is saying eight, there, there's no numbers for eight. You can't do eight. There's only six properties and not even close. But I'm saying that if they were to come back and amend it and say, look, we did our data, I think the board shouldn't be so discouraging of them to seek an eight-foot variance because the numbers on first glance aren't there. Because what I'm saying is I don't think the standard is that tight that the board has to look at whether 50% of the other neighboring properties have an eight-foot setback. And then the second is, that's not the only standard. The, the, ordinance, you, you, the ordinance does not specify the number. The ordinance uses a word, com comparable. 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 And and that's, what, that's yep. what we have interpreted. Yep. You look up the word comparable, and it says mean, median, average. Yep, and I would. That's fifty percent. That's fine. It's, I'm, I'm not a problem with the fifty percent. I'm more looking at the comparable, the definition of comparable, and I don't think the definition of comparable means equal. And when you look at comparable, I think eight, nine, and ten feet are really comparable. And so what I'm saying is the board. The Bucci's have a 10-foot variance application on pending, and that's now going to be tabled. If they were to come back and seek an 8-foot amended, uh, amend their application for an 8-foot, I think that that's something the board should even entertain because that is really what they need. Their intention was to go straight up, 
and now they're so fearful they may not get the opportunity to go up, they're compromising it and, and shifting it over, which is aesthetically going to have horrible impact on the neighborhood. I would rather see the board give them, recognize, you're right, it's not just eight foot. 50% of the properties don't have to have an eight foot side setback. Rather, it is comparable. 10 feet, 9 feet, 7 feet, 11 feet. That's all within comparable range. And when you take the numbers and the comparable numbers along with the impact on the neighborhoods, the economic impact to these folks, and the other variance standards, I think the Bucci's made it on the 8 foot. And that well, would be a better, better result for everybody let me, and, and the neighbors. Let me just throw one other um, variable into the discussion. The front setback is even a bigger problem in many ways because the front setback they're looking for is uh, they're looking for basically a 20 foot front setback and there is only five, five, they're looking for a five foot setback to five make it within. Yeah. They're all in 20 feet. They're, they're looking for a five foot variance. Yes. From 25 feet down to 20 feet. The problem is there is only one other property in the neighborhood of the, what is it, 29 properties they surveyed that has a 20-foot setback. And, and they have some work to do. I'm not saying that we should rubber, I put myself on the board, I apologize, right. not we. The board shouldn't rubber stamp their application. They still have some work to do. But I think the, particularly any of these numbers, the side or the front more particularly, front is even more challenging to ascertain because you have the play on where the property line really ends based on the gravel, based on the, the road. So I, I think that these numbers are really tough. And a number can go either a, an estimation, whether it's a side, a front, or a back, is deceiving. But they have some work to do. But with respect to the side, I would hate to have to see a result that's offered just yep. to get it. And you have to remember, either the when you look at the depth of this house, this house is only 21 feet wide. So if they don't get the side setback, the front setback, they're now, and they have to go up and shift the back five feet, now their addition is 16 feet wide. And then if they have to go on the side and shift it another two feet, the 32 feet turn to 30, this $150,000 addition is resulting in a 16 by 30 addition. And now magnifying that and going up the second story. Again, it brings me back to we're really looking really hard at the 8 foot versus 10 foot or, or 20. And they have to meet their numbers. They have to show that the neighborhood is within a comparable set of data. But I, I think when you look at Richmond Terrace and the others, they will, because then that's the characteristic of the neighborhood. The, the real problem is that the audience doesn't address tight neighborhoods uh, in a residential aid district with setbacks is, that's reasonable for a small lot. Yep. And we've tried to get that changed uh, to no avail. Uh, so the real problem lies with, with the way the audience is, is handling these small lots. That's the real issue. How will the ordinance get changed for this process? You, you can petition the, the uh, council as a citizen. But I I, I, no, I, I was just, okay. it, it, it had nothing to do with you. I was, I was trying to give Ms. Miller a hard time. So. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Miller, for your comments. And we really appreciate the conundrum you face, and we're all sympathetic to it. And, um, you know, take a look at it and see what you can do to try to resolve some of these issues. We're certainly happy to reconsider it. Any further comments? I think we're good on that. Any further business to come before the uh, board today? Yes, sir. Okay. We have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? We're adjourned. Thank you.